On this episode, we're going to feature Got to Moves Pro Wrestling's latest Choco Pro event, I Only Live Twice, with the return of a wrestler who hasn't wrestled for over a, a year named Masa Takanashi, Takanashi taking on another wrestler. We also got two matches from NWA's Power Surge. Also, we got AEW Dark, and finally, NXT with the main event, Gargano uh, taking on Karen Cross for the NXT title. So, let's get started with another episode of the Leader Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Leader Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I'm your host, Jay Rod here. So let's begin with Got to Move Pro Wrestling with the latest Choco Pro event. I only live twice. Now this was a, a return show for Masa Takanashi, but there were other good things that took place in this. We had a tag team match with Balian Aki and Minoru Fujita taking on members of DDT Pro Wrestling. We're talking about uh, Yukio Sakaguchi, who is w a member of Eruption, all teaming with the despicable Chris Brooks, who still has a grudge against Lulu Pencil. Uh, the match was kind of great. It showed like Got to Move are trying to beat Chris Brooks in every way, but he even tries to antagonized Lulu Pencil who was there watching and filming the entire thing but however in this match somehow it was the um, Sakaguchi and Brooks were able to overcome their match and win it which was a very disappointing loss to uh, Balianaki and Minoru Vegeta the next match was I have to say one of my favorites we have Beauty As Is by Yuna Mizumori um, and Emi Sakura taking on, surprise, surprise, Neo Bishigu, Bishikigu, consistent of May St. Michelle and, of course, Saki Samana. This match was so much fun. Now, we all know who is behind uh, May St. Michelle. That is May Shruga, but shh, keep that quiet. The match was amazing. I enjoyed every match of this because there's a bit of certain things when I look at May St. Michelle. Like she has this uniqueness when it comes to, you know, being teamed with Saki Sama. You know, and I have to say I enjoyed it. But however, when it comes to Neo Bishikigun, all bets are off. Basically, they lost in this. Well, Excuse me. Neo Bishiki Goon won, but however, beauty, beauty as is continues to haunt them even when they lost. Basically, this is going to be an interesting storyline. Hopefully, we get to see it again. Next match, we have Fenuri A uh, Fuminori Abe, who I've seen at All Japan Pro Wrestling before, taking on Masahiro. Taka, uh, Takanashi, who people have been expecting him to return to wrestling for almost over a year, and it was a pretty good match. There was like a lot of submissions in this one, uh, but in the end, um, <sighs> Takanashi can take so much, so he actually had no other choice but to tap out. And it was a good show, I have to say. Uh, I would like to see Neo Bishiki Goon come back and I I would love to see them in, in Got to Move but it'll be an interesting time when that perfect is timing because it wouldn't surprise me at all whatsoever but we'll see what happens
Okay, now I normally don't do NWA Power Search because most of the time they have these, um, how do I say, discussions and talks and previews and all this and show old footage of some of the previous events. One of the previous events that they display, I did review it once before. This was a match between actor David Arquette and Josephus, God rest his soul. This was a match where we all remember this was a hair versus hair match where David Arquette picked his partner, which is the former NWA world champion, Tim Storm. But the two matches that they posted on this one was the first one, we have Jeremiah Plunkett, who I haven't seen for quite some time, and Marshy Rocket. Now, the match was okay. This is, this is footage they never put in power. But I have to say, they did a good job trying to put it in power surge. Um, I have to say, I haven't seen much of Marshay Rocket as a, in Jeremy uh, Pluckett, but it was okay. I'm not gonna lie, but it was Marshay uh, Rocket who won the match. Uh, surprisingly, I've been seeing how people were supporting him. And I think it shows that maybe he has potential. Next match is a three-way match. We have Jordan Clearwater, uh, Papa Jive, and Rush Freeman. And of course, Jordan Clearwater is being accompanied by Black G's. <coughs> Excuse me. And practically that's what happened. But however, Black G's would do whatever it takes to make sure his client is happy and make sure that he gets all the wins. But I don't think Clearwater had any idea what he's done behind his back. But a win's a win. But we'll see how this thing with Black G's continues on as he is now under the guidance of, of that. But we'll just see what happens then. Okay, so we got AEW Dark. Now, those who've seen it, don't be alarmed. There were in Daily's Place. You see, they do pre-tapes on Dark. Uh, don't know if they're going to do now whenever they're on the road. But we'll see what happens then. First match, we had Matt Hardy along with the <coughs> Hardy family office taking on ja uh, Jazzy. Don't know who he is. But the match was okay. But, of course, it ended with Matt Hardy putting the leech on. But in post-match, Joel was outside and he had to clean off Matt Hardy. Basically, this is punishment for him for screwing up that match in elevation or so. I don't know, but we'll see how that plays out. Next match, we have Brian Cage taking on Vox uh, Vineyard. Um, you can guess Brian Cage won the match. He's always been a powerhouse, but we'll see what's going to happen in Dynamite tomorrow with a course well by the time this video is uploaded it's already Wednesday so you know what I mean the FTW will be on the FTW title will be on the line so we'll see what happens next up we have the um, uh, no the acclaim taking on Derek P uh, Pisa Turo and Roman's uh, Roselle once again this acclaim decided that this this two former army veterans I had to say, I would not be a, if I would say things like that, I would run my ass. But of course, the claim being the claim, even though they are determined to believe that they will one day uh, take those tag team titles. But however, the varsity blondes are in their way. But you can guess right now that the acclaim uh, won the match. But however, we'll see what will determine who will be raising up the ranks. Will they be moving to number two to get to the top, or they will, f or if they fail, they'll probably remain number three. We'll see about that. Next up, we got Diamante versus Harlow O'Hara. Or Har uh, Harlow O'Hara. It was an interesting match. Uh, ended with a big submission by Diamante, but however, prior before the match started, she called out Big Swole, calling her that she has made a name for herself, but. I'll get to Big School a little bit because she had something to say about um, Diamante. <coughs> the next up, we have Ethan Page taking on Ryan Mantel. As you know, the all ego Ethan Page. You know how he is. He's cocky, arrogant, and he'll do whatever it takes to get a win, and that's exactly what he did. But he'll do whatever it takes right now for, tomorrow, for the coffin match to bury... Darby Allen once and for all. 
Uh, the next match we have Big Swole taking on Sahara Seven. A good match. It ended with her putting the Texas Cloverleaf on Sahara, allowing her to cut. But however, in the post match, she put an interesting promo where she's been fully aware that Diamante had called her out. But however, she put it out that, oh, you don't work here. You're not a full time. Um, AEW Ross member. I mean, I know many fans would like to see her. I mean, I thought so too. I would like to see that too. So this is going to be interesting. So it will will it be in dark or in elevation? I don't know, but I would like to see it. Next up, we got Dante Martin taking <coughs> taking on the most hated guy in Gate and Change of Wrestling, RSP. If you guys didn't recognize him, then yes, that is RSP for all you GCW fans. So, they didn't mention that he's from GCW, but they did mention the scars on his body from doing death matches. But I have to say, people can be impressed with Ricky, with RSP, how he is very not built for a guy to do like Enziguri, but he can do it. But however, when it comes to Dante Martin with his speed and athleticism, it's undeniable. And that's how it helps him win his matches. So, Dante done it. He taken on RSP, a real big dude. But this time, we'll see what happens next. Then we got the Dark Order. Stu Grayson and Evil Uno taking on Sean Maluda and Papa Don. As you know, I was impressed with their with the ending of this match where they did like a power driver where Uno has Papa Don and then Stu kicked them and bam! It's over. One, two, three. You're out, baby. <coughs> Next up, we got Ryan Mena taking on Marcus Cross. Now, you all know how these guys attack their opponents when they're outside because they want to give them a makeover. They try to mess up his hair, but even though they didn't get to mess it up completely, it did allow for Ryan Mena to win his match as always. Next up, we got Penelope Ford taking on Robin Renegade. Um, if you guys did notice her eyelash, she had the colors of what Yuka Sakasaki wears. It's a direct message to her because she will not tolerate other women coming to her place. Now, you can say, we haven't seen her for months. Ever since the arcade, ever since she couldn't beat Chris Satlander in that match. Well, yeah, we'll see what they go down in that one. Next up, we got Matt Hardy sending a message to Christian Cage saying all of this. That she, he's going to force him to retire. That he needs to leave. That he's trying to take away his thunder. But, you know, we'll see what happens next uh, this coming Wednesday. Next up, we got Frankie Kazarian taking on Austin Green. I have to say, Frankie, he looks more like he still has enough mileage as a singles competitor. Despite the fact that SCU is no longer together. But, impressive match. So, the Elite Hunter prevailed. With the chicken wing. Next up, we got Lee Johnson and Brock Anderson taking on Aaron Fry and Mark uh, Davidson. I have to say, Brock, I did like how he ended the match when he did the brain buster on, on I forgot who, but he's much like his dad. You know, I have to say, he is a spitting image of his dad. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere down the line he be, takes the mantle of the enforcer because that would be awesome to watch. So, Big shout out for both Lee and Lee Johnson and Brock. They actually pull it off a good team. I would like to see them tacting for good. Next up, we got Wheeler Yuta, who has a message with uh, Angelico. Now, we all know Wheeler Yuta made biggest surprises. To me, I would like AEW to sign the guy. He is amazing. You know, with whatever he does. Um, I always thought U the Wheeler Yuta was a weird name, but it seems fine. But... He's facing off against a guy who's done submission moves down in Mexico versus a guy who knows how to do submissions. Next up, we got Julia Hart taking on Maddie Ronkowski. I have to say it was a really interesting match. Uh, I would have assumed Maddie would win because we've seen her many times. But since Julia Hart is now the cheerleader for the Varsity Blondes, they have to let her win because I think they see something special with the Varsity Blondes. And I hope... AEW signs her because she's she plays a good part with the blonde with the blondes, you know? And that's what I like about it. So 
but she won by applying the splits on her. One, two, three, it is over. Then we have the blade along with the bunny and Hardy taking on uh, Jake Tucker. You can guess this match is already over from the moment Jake Tucker got in the ring with the blade, and that is it. Then we get an interview with Angelico. Uh, apparently, Jack was annoying him about Wheeler Yuta, that he is a spectacular wrestler and all of that. So I don't think Angelico likes that. But that became the main event for Dark. Next up, we got Private Party versus the San Rusman and Joey Sus. <coughs> you can guess in this particular match that Private Party won. As always, because they are now on align themselves with Matt Hardy, and that's how they always played out. Next up, we got Powerhouse Hobbs taking out oh, Travis Titan. It was already over the moment all of this happened because Powerhouse Hobbs doesn't play by anybody's rules, he just does what he wants and demolish anybody that gets in his way. Then we got the wingman JD Drake and Caesar Bononi taking on the Gun Club. Awesome match, I enjoyed it. You know, I, uh, Colton Gunn continues to impress me, even though people were like, would love to see Austin come back, but we'll see when that day comes. But Austin, uh, Colton is now building up a little more momentum for himself, and it's a great thing to see. Then we finally get Wheeler Yuta taking on Angelico. It's a great match, I have to say. They have like similar styles, but however, who had the better advantage? It turns out in this one, it was... Angelico, he got into Wheeler Yuta's uh, leg and dismantled to make it hurt him more to make him tap out with the Yavetto. And that's what exactly he did. So I think that's it right now with Dark. So let's move on with the last thing, NXT. Okay, so the last thing we got is NXT. It opened up with Ember Moon taking on Dakota Kai. Uh, as we know now that Chelsea Blackheart is no longer part of the NXT roster. She just moved up to the main roster in SmackDown. So she went on solo. The match was pretty well good. I have to say there was no interference with <coughs> Raquel Gonzalez. Um, don't know if the idea is for Ember Moon to get another shot of the title. But the Kai did one very impressively. But however... Zaya Lee shows up and she has unfinished business with Raquel Gonzalez. Now Raquel may not be afraid of her, but um, if I were you, Raquel, I would be afraid of her mentor, Mei Ying or whatever she calls herself, because the last thing you want is to suffer the same fate as Mercedes Martinez. And trust me, that's the last thing you don't want. If they do that with that story, it would be like Raquel Gonzalez is now afraid of someone who is more powerful than she couldn't possibly imagine. Now, we do get an interview with, of course, Diamond Mine. We have been seeing them recently making their plays, you know, Roderick Strong. But, of course, they were looking for challenges. And the person who accepted is former Undisputed Era member Bobby Fish. Now he seems like he wanted a shot of Roder Strong, but it's Tyler Russ who got to it in the first place. Now we get to the most fun parts. This was divided in three parts. LA Knight gets his butler, Cameron Grimes. Now, you know what I like about this thing? LA Knight treats it like too bad, Grimes. But Grimes is feeling more optimism i don't know it's like he's a fun character and he's enjoying it you know and, and later he actually seems like he was doing a good job with with the lawnmower and all that i'm like what i think la knight made a mistake you know ha trying to humiliate cameron grimes i don't think he recognizes it but Wade Barrett seems like he was happy, but later's like, what the hell? <laughs> I think it's playing out very really well because it's so, it tells like, come on. The dude didn't care if he won the title. All he ever cared about is gaining the respect from Ted DiBiase. And that kind of, he's like 
being this optimistic individual. And I think that's what I like about Cameron Grimes now, that even though he's going to the moon, he's being optimism. And I have to say, sooner or later, LA Knight may have to just fire him because he made a mistake. I would love to see that happen when that day comes. Now, the match between T Russ Tyler and Bobby Fitch was good. But, however, you can guess right away, Roderick Strong got into his face. And, of course, it did allow for Tyler Russ to take the final blow, take a blow at Bobby Fish and then allowing himself to win the match. But, however, the whole thing was a trap. And here comes Kushida, who has a grudge against Diamond Mine after what they did a couple weeks ago. You know, trying to, how do I say this, make a name for themselves. Now, throughout the entire evening, Joe, Samoa Joe decided to give his uh, the information about the match was born informing them. Listen, <coughs> Daddy started with Cross and then Gargano. Then he had a little running with Pete Dunn. I think Dunn wanted to fight him, but he can't because he's not medically cleared. But hopefully he can. Now, as you know, we've been seeing the Cinderella story between Indy Hartwell and Dexter Loomis. And the one person who's enjoying it is the one who keeps talking about the Cinderella story, Beth Phoenix. She decided to give Indy Hartwell an advice. I'm like, wow. She she really wants it. It's like she feels like she's watching a Spanish soap opera. <laughs> I don't know, but it's fun. Now, this next match, we have Gigi Dolan. We know her as Priscilla Kelly, the ex-wife of Darby Allen taking on Saray and I have to say the match was pretty good but something happened that I don't know what to make of it I don't know what fans were making could make of it Mandy Rose showed up she came back to NXT now let's talk about the match first and then we'll talk about Mandy Rose in a bit the match was pretty good and I have to say Saray is a very impressive wrestler I've recently been watching some of her older footage when she was in Japan um and she continues, I hope one day she will make a play for the NXT women's title. But however, now let's talk about Mandy Rose. What is she doing there? We know she's in uh, in a team with um, Dana Brooke for pursuit of the, N of the women's tag team titles. I don't know. People were saying, you don't go here. I mean, it's true. We haven't seen, she hasn't been back in um, NXT for quite some time. It, it didn't make no sense. But think about it. Um, we have seen wrestlers like, you know, Finn Balor, who went back to NXT to get better himself. And we know Triple H was trying to get some wrestlers to return to NXT. But I don't know. But I don't know what's Mandy Rose's angle. But it wasn't the first time we saw her. But the end was, in fact, where, like, an exclusive video was shown. Like, they want to know what was her true intentions. Why did she dare? She said, we just got to wait and see. Well, I'm kind of curious. Now, Santos Escobar appears that he has a lot on his mind. Now, he knows that he was embarrassed to lose to Bronson Reed and not again the North American title. But however, <coughs> he feels that he was considered lucky that, that he got away with it. But unlucky that he didn't lose the title to him because I think Santos would have loved to humiliate him more but however right now it appears that Hit Row are now getting under his skin because I think this is going to bring back an old story that brought back if you guys remember recently Santos has been the one guy who's been beating Isaiah Swerve Scott a bunch of times when he was a cruiserweight champion so imagine now what if the roles are reversed Swerve so Scott's going to humiliate him more. But we'll see what they're going to go with that. And of course, he cannot overlook the, his opponent of the night, Dexter Loomis. And I say we go to that match. That match was so fun. Dexter Loomis being creepy and all this and the other that. But of course, you have to know Tweedle D and Tweedle Dumb were going to be there and interfere the match. And of course, it did allow for Santos to put the Phantom Driver onto Dexter Loomis to win. But however, it looks like they got into a heated argument in the post-match when Hit Row decides to get under their skin. 
Now, during the commercial break, they reveal that Indy Hartwell picked up Lex Lumis and she falls. And we're about to see the kisser around the world. But no! Candace LeRae ruined it. She ruined it. But it's okay. It can happen another time. But we'll just we'll pay attention to that. And please, someone, tell Bev C Phoenix to stop watching too many soap operas. Now, as you know, last week was an amazing match between Kyle Riley and Adam Cole. Basically, what happened is Kyle Riley knows that he lost and he feels like he can learn from it. And he knows that one day he can beat Adam Cole regardless. But however, Adam Cole had something. He always will consider him as a loser. But of course, Adam Cole had to deal with the one person that now wants a golden opportunity to take him on. And that person is none other than the Colossus, uh, Bronson Reed. And of course, Adam Cole tried to kick his head off, but no luck and no to avail. Now, they just started with, <coughs> with the commencement of the NXT breakout tournament in the first round we had. Duke Hudson versus Ikemanjaro. Now, my money was on Ikemanjaro because he seems like a fun wrestler. I mean, I don't know who this Duke Hudson is, but uh, Wade Barrett said that he reminded of himself. I mean, he could, but I would love to see Ikemanjaro win. But however, um, Duke Hudson somehow was able to pull off the victory on this one. Now... We get another interview this time. We got Pete Dunne, who is declaring himself a total badass, but also the best technical wrestler in the world. However, someone took offense to that, and that person is Toothless Timmy. Yeah, Timothy Thatcher took offense to that, and of course, Champa decided to give him a helping hand. So we may see a few between uh, those with Pete Dunne and Orny Lorcan between Champa and Dunn. I can't wait to see when that day comes. Now we get a tag team, a women's tag team match. We got Kaden Carter and KZ Kanzar taking on Aliyah and Jesse Kamea of the Robert Stone brand. I have to say, Kaden and KZ are very impressive. They're a very cohesive unit. I enjoy everything they have accomplished in NXT. And of course, what an amazing ending with uh, KZ Kanazar pulling a 450, and that is it. But however, someone was not happy with their loss, and they keep losing time and time, and that person was Aaliyah. She completely lost her mind, and she beat up Robert Str Stone silly. Jesse Kamea has no clue what to make of it, so she walked out. But out of nowhere, Frankie Monette comes in. I don't know if she had a better proposition. I don't know. But in the outside, in the back side of the venue, they asked her what's going to be of Aaliyah. Well, she said that they'll be fine without her. But however, here comes Mandy Rose saying, well, it looks like the brand is now under new management. We don't know what that is, but I'm thinking I have some ideas about Mandy, why she came back. I don't think she's back as a wrestler, but I may put that in this Sunday's podcast. Maybe it could make a more clear sense. I'm not sure, but it's only my personal speculation and guess. Now, the main event, oh my god, this match was so good and it was so intense. As Cross had to maintain his composure not to provoke Samoa Joe. But, however, it was pretty determined that they want to continue more with Karrion Cross as a champion. I don't know when he could lose it, either on um, maybe a few takeovers later, I'm not sure. But it was a good match. But in the end, Cross got what he wanted. He wanted to choke out Samoa Joe to teach him a lesson because Cross made, wanted to make a point that Regal lost control of NXT. He wanted him to admit it, but Joe ruined that party for him. But this time, I don't know what's going to happen. My guess that maybe Regal may force uh, Cross to pay a fee. I'm not sure. But we'll see what happens next week on NXT because I'm kind of curious what's going to happen with certain things going on. 
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, me reviewing the entire Tuesday wrestling stuff that I have, Cho uh, Choco Pro, NWA Power Surge, um, AEW Dark, and NXT. Coming up, not only we got AEW Dynamite, the Fighter Fest, day night one in, um, in Austin, Texas, I'm going to add other things, so this is what's going to be on the agenda for the next episode. We got Real Japan Pro Wrestling. AAW's event that took place this past June, Crush and Destroy, and of course, Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling, which is a Japanese wrestling show that has heart and death matches called Independence Day that took place on Independence Day. So, it's going to be an interesting review we're going to have. There's plenty of stuff I'm going to be talking, but it'll be interesting to see where they're going to go. But, for now... <coughs> I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time, same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu, so goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang!